Well, morning. Good to see you. And uh, M0NTV, Nick here. And uh, just want to do a very quick, uh, just short little video to uh, to share with you something, one of the things that's on my bench at the moment. Um, some of you will know I've been having some antenna troubles recently and, and at least one of the, uh, the issues that I traced it back to was an antenna switcher that I've got in the shack just down there. Uh, I've got two antenna switches. Um, one is for VHF UHF and it's a Watson and it costs about 50 quid, quite expensive really, but it's very well made, very rugged, very low insertion loss, works fantastic, never had any worries with it. When it came to switching um, for HF, I thought, well, it's not going to be too critical. I can probably afford to take a punt on something a bit cheaper. Um, so I did, and uh, and I bought this uh, uh, little device. Um, one of these. Now, it, it rejoices in, look at this, 1,000 watts. Yeah, right. <laughs> Coaxial antenna switch. Um, they're very cheap. I'm not sure what I paid for it now, but I think on eBay you can get them for about 12 quid or something now. I think I paid about 20 or something, but it was uh, it, it was cheap. Um, and it, to be fair, it worked all right. Um, but I've been having a few issues with it. And, uh, and one of the issues was I noticed that actually the, the SWR was quite different from, from when you measure the, uh, the SWR from, from here uh, as opposed to the leads just coming in from your antennas there. And um, I thought, what's going on here? And then, but then the actual, look at this, the, the actual um, SO239 <laughs> absolutely snapped off. And I, re I realised that these things... Um, the, the base plate's actually snapped off it. It's not actually soldered at all. So I thought, I need to have a look at this. So I unscrewed it. Get a load of this. <laughs> this is what is inside. Now, I don't know you can see that. But um, basically, the, these... Um, now, I have, in fairness, I have unscrewed the, the base plate of this uh, now. Uh, but this whole thing came away with the, with the PL259 on it. These um, SO239s, they're, they're screwed in with two screws, but actually there's no nut on the end, <laughs> so the whole thing wobbles. Um, but the, the worst thing of all is look at that rat's nest there. And now why the heck are there so many wires there? Well, I'll tell you why. Because this thing is not grounded at all, right? <laughs> so um, what they're doing, this is the, the switcher, um, I've taken there's a, a plastic knob on that. I've taken that off. This is the switch here, um, uh, rotary position, but they're, they're switching all the grounds, so there's no common ground, right? You know, so look at it. You know, um, uh, one kilowatt it's supposed to do. There's no ground <laughs> on the chassis at all, right? Um, uh, and and talk about isolation. It's no wonder the, the internet. When I started researching this, uh, is full of people saying about this is just basically a paperweight throw it away it's a, a well to put it politely it's a pile of junk um and uh they you know and they said that you know there's no port isolation between these these ports at all uh, and i'm not surprised this is all just regular wire, unshielded wire so it's the, there's no grounded to the chassis uh, and it's a complete rat, rat's nest there so I thought, well, I could just buy another one, like a lot of people say, just chuck it, buy another one. Um, but there are some people on the uh, on the, uh, the the net who uh, have modified it, and those of you that know me will know I can hardly resist <laughs> temptation to uh, build things and modify things. Um, so um, um, so that's what I'm going to attempt to do. Uh, now for this this here, I'm just going to replace this with a proper. Um, uh, solid uh, um, uh, SO239, you know, with the with the actual four uh, little screw holes in with the with the plate, the fixed plate, and I'll do that. Um, I'll, I'll think about the other ones. I might try the other ones as they are. I'm going to rip all that wiring out. I'm going to ground um, the uh, uh, the actual uh, SO239 to so the chassis. Probably just um, scrape off some of the uh, the paint there and, and and solder those on. So everything is grounded to the chassis. And actually, I'm going to take a lead out then um, because my bus, my ground bus actually in the shack is just very close to it and actually ground the whole thing to that as well. Um, 
and uh, so rip out all the wiring and probably what I'm going to do then is, is use some proper shielded coax and go from here to the actual switch um, and see. Um, some people have tried uh, tried this even without shielded coax, just with kind of thick thick wire and, and spread space them out and I've had a pretty reasonable results but certainly a lot better <laughs> than, this, than this thing at the minute. So, um, so we shall see. So that's the project at the minute, and um, uh, see um, how we get on. <laughs> right. Okay. Well, the moment of truth. Um, here it is, rebuilt. I've got the um, uh, the earth wire for the uh, for the ground bus, and da -da 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 -da. here we are. So, um, hope you can see that. And I think you'll agree that is much tidier. Um, in the end, the only things I kept were the chassis and the switch. I swapped out all the RF connectors. Um, I fortunately, as a good home brewer, had a, a ready supply of chassis mount SO239s, uh, which I don't have now. <laughs> I'm going to buy some more. Um, but uh, And so I swapped out all of those because there were reports on the internet as well that actually they weren't even quite the right. Um, size and people talking about the issues with um, threading PL259s onto them, which I, I hadn't necessarily found, but I thought I'm going to play it safe if I'm if I'm doing this. So I swapped all those out um, and uh, uh, screwed and bolted them on. They've all got nuts on, so th these things are solid. These are not going anywhere. Um, uh, now I did. Uh, I, this is a little bit of RG58. It's the only time I ever use RG58. This um, um, here this little wire here, um, and uh, because that was one, that's the connector that is furthest. These other two, if you can see, I don't know if you can make out the, the red wire and the white wire at the top, um, were such tiny distances that actually I left I left those wires, I just cut them as short as possible and took them straight into the, uh, uh, into the SO239s. Um, Obviously removed all the ground wires, uh, what you can't see, um, but I stripped the whole thing, the whole chassis bare, and scratched and then sanded all this this inside top uh, layer. You can probably just just about see there. So there's a good um, uh, electrical connection between all these um, these chassis mount RF connectors on that side and on this side as well. So there's a good um, uh, chassis. Uh, ground now, but just to um, help matters, obviously it's next to my um, ground bus, so I've got a little uh, crimped little connector and uh, put one of those on, um, just to be uh, extra safe. Um, and hopefully this will be a lot better. I have tested it, and um, it is certainly phenomenally better than it was before. And there's no comparison. There's a little bit um, of loss, as you would expect, um, uh, just going going through the, uh, the the connectors, if nothing else. Um, but only a tiny amount, and, and certainly I can uh, definitely live with that. And uh, so, yeah, quite pleased with that in the end. Um, and uh, even with the uh, the replacing all the RF uh, connectors, um, probably still cheaper than buying um, uh, another one because uh, you wouldn't get another one for for that kind of price, I guess. Um, but there we are. So, um, so uh, yeah. There's, uh, but there's plenty of instructions. Everyone's got one of these things, and <laughs> um, yeah, if you're going to use it, <laughs> you might want to modify it first. And uh, so there we go. So anyway, hope you found that interesting. Catch you soon. 73s M0 NTV QRT. Bye bye.